Chief Chester Brooks. Here. Assistant Chief Bonnie Jo Griffith. Bonnie Jo was absent. She uh, came down the hill a few minutes ago. Secretary Nikki Michael. Here. Treasurer Benita Shane. Here. Member Annette Ketchum. Here. Member Nathan Young. Here. Member Michelle Holly. Here. We have a quorum. Kulamasi Hutch, I'm not I welcome everybody. And um, anybody in the audience that wishes to speak will be given a chance to as we go along. Can I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I would make that motion. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, minutes of our last meeting. There's no need. There's no need. Okay. Uh, can I uh, hear a motion to table the minutes? I make a motion to table the minutes from the last meeting, which aren't prepared until the next meeting. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded <laughs> to table the minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Financial report is within the packet. I set a motion we approve the financial report pending audit. I 
to second that motion. The motion been made and seconded to approve the financial report. All in favor, we say aye. 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 Opposed? I think uh, resolution uh, 2015 21, that's our table resolution from two meetings ago. Is there a motion to bring that resolution off the table? New business. I'm sorry, unfinished business. Uh, the packet does include, and I think all of the council members have read the, the corrected or amended employee travel policy. further discussion on um, the revisions to the personnel policy. If 
there's no further discussion, all in favor of accepting the revised personnel policy, please say aye. 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 Opposed? New business. Can the I you did a little six mile walk today toward the <laughs> <How about now? laughs> so I'm not uh, not totally all here, although I feel great. <laughs> uh, all in favor. Well, we need a motion. First, first let me ask to make a motion. So uh, I so move. We accept the revised personnel policy. I'll so, second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. And uh, I thank my counsel for the correction. <laughs> all, all in favor of the revised personnel policy, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Under new business, can the secretary please read the title. Excuse me, Chad. And uh, on that other business under unfinished, I wanted to uh, note that um, <clears throat> the donation that was made for the van steps, that those van steps will be installed by the end of the first week in June and uh, paid for by the anonymous donor. So that's been taken care of just in, so it didn't slide through the cracks. Right. Thank you, Nan. Okay. Excuse me to have that. I just I thought you were going to say other when you didn't. Do I hear any additional? Uh, also, I was going to thank you for sending them to the care of that clerk to uh, uh, make certain they got that done. Is there any additional unfinished business? If not, under new business, could the secretary please read the title? And uh, now the report to resolve uh, resolution 2015-28. A resolution of the Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians to honor the service and dedication to the tribe by tribal member Wayne Stoll. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Delaware Tribal Council hereby honors the memory of Wayne Stoll for his many, many years of dedication, service, and efforts as he worked to make the Delaware tribe a better tribe for all. Wayne will always be remembered as a tremendous asset to the Delaware Tribe of Indians. I would move to adopt Resolution 2015-28. I'll second that motion. Resolution 2015-28 has been moved and seconded. All in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Would Secretary Dr. Mickey Michael Please read the title and now therefore be it resolved of Resolution 29. A resolution of the Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians to approve tribal membership. Now therefore be it resolved. Well, let me read the numbers. Whereas the numbers 058482 through 058498 correspond with the names of individual applicants determined eligible by the enrollment director. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians does hereby authorize and approve the persons whose name correspond with the numbers listed above as Delaware Tribal members. And I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Motion been made and seconded to approve the new Delaware Tribal membership. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And can we hear the title? And now, therefore, be it resolved of Resolution 30. A resolution of the Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians to submit an application for a, an FY 2015 NACRA repatriation grant. And I'm going to go down to. Actually, I'm going to read most of this yeah. because it needs to be out loud. Uh, the, the first whereas is normal. The second one is the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians adopts this resolution to authorize the director of the Delaware Tribe Historic Preservation Office to complete and submit for an FY 2015 NAGPRA repatriation grant. Whereas the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians recognizes that the quote chambers collection represents the human remains and objects from 62 burials that were excavated and removed from the 18th century Delaware Cemetery that was associated with the historic Kuskuskis village in what is today known as Western Pennsylvania. Whereas the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians is aware that our representatives have been consulting with the State Museum of Pennsylvania since 1999 and the Carnegie Museum of Natural History since 2010 on the cultural affiliation and repatriation of cha the Chambers Collection. Whereas the Delaware Tribal Council, the Delaware Tribe of Indians understands that the control of the collection has been transferred to joint ownership of the Delaware Tribe, Delaware Nation, and the Stockbridge, Stockbridge Muncie community by the State Museum of Pennsylvania and the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. And whereas the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians is aware that the repatriation and reburial of the Chambers Collection will be carried out jointly by the Delaware Tribe of Indians, Delaware Nation, and the Stockbridge Muncie community. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians does hereby authorize and approve the application for FY 2015 NAGPRA repatriation. I make a motion that we accept this uh, resolution. I second. second. Motion been made and seconded. Do I hear any discussion? Uh, I'd like to ask a question. You know, when I when I read the uh, report from Bryce, it is does he have to take it upon himself to always contact those other tribes or do they, is this mutual or I didn't quite understand. It sounded like he, he has to do the, all the prodding along and, and getting them up there to, to participate. Did, did I miss, did you? I do, uh, actually, I think they, uh, the Stockbridge and Muncie's and Western Delaware uh, get the same notices uh -huh. that we but, do. But he's doing this writing for everybody. And so they have to, is that right? I, I couldn't quite understand. Uh, did you understand that, Nikki? No, they, they have as much responsibility as Bryce. I mean, uh -huh. I think there are times when Delaware Nation may take the lead, and then there are times when we Delaware take Tribe the okay. takes the lead. But it's really a, a working relationship. That, I mean, it, it's not always perfect like any relationship. Well, they, yeah. You know, it's a okay. little bit of give and take and when they have turnover. But by general, Purposes, they're pretty good at sharing. So they share that, and the fact that he is the the um, the government or the park services or whoever gives this, they're aware of the fact that all three of them are going to share it's, it jointly. It's law, basically. Uh -huh. It's law because that's our historical area and it's shared. Okay. Well, that's what I understand what he said, and I but. Then he just took. Did he just take the initiative, or does sometimes they write it and we join in, or I, I seem like, or does he? Well, if they're writing, see the thing is, uh, we we all write a repatriation grant. They all have to write their repatriation grant too. So they're all. Oh, all through. Okay. It. Okay, that explains it. Okay, I got it. Do I hear further discussion? Yes, Chief. May I be recognized? Yes, Curtis. <clears throat> Chief.
Chief, I'm going to, Chief, I'm going to uh, address my remarks directly to you. I think it's a no-brainer that we're going to pass this thing. But I do want to state something for the record. I'm not asking that any of the language of this be changed at all. We talked about consultation since 1999, and probably from a formal staff level that may have indeed occurred. But, Chief, in 1997, when I served as the Chief of the Delaware Tribe of Indians, I went to the State Museum at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I had that staff escort me up to one of the floors of the museum, and way in the back, in a dark room with metal shelves, with cardboard boxes, they led me to these remains that we're talking about, 1997. I brought tobacco in there, Chief. I put tobacco down, I prayed. I told those ancestors, someday we'll come and we'll take you away from this place. We'll return you to Mother Earth. You're our chief now. I encourage you to be in attendance when we put those remains back in the earth. We've got a place in Ohio. We've got a plan worked out. It's going to take some time, but it's going to happen soon. I encourage you to fulfill that journey and to honor the commitment that I made on behalf of our people when I was the chief. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Curtis, and I assure you that not only will I be there, but probably several of our other council members. And uh, as, as everybody knows, the, the reburial we did on Ellis Island in uh, 2003, uh, I think those that actually, uh, those remains that actually been discovered uh, 20 or 30 years before we got it done, and I, I, I don't suppose I can promise, but I can promise that we're not going to let it go 20 or 30 years, not if we had to pay for it ourselves, if the National Park Service or the museum won't help us. Well, well Chet, I might add to your remarks that uh, we went up and prepared those bones for burial in 87, and it took from 87 to 03 to get yeah. them in the ground. That was, and we thought it was going to happen. I admire Bryce that he moves, he's moving things a little faster than they used to move, but uh, it just takes forever to do this. It's uh, unbelievable. I think we really have to push uh, the, the museums and in some cases the National Park Service, whatever federal agency, and, and I uh, think this council is probably uh, prepared to do all the pushing necessary because that, it's too long for our uh, people to be in a museum. And I would, I thank you for that reminder, Curtis. One issue, you. <clears throat> Could the secretary please read resolution I'm sorry. Uh, uh, all in favor of resolution 201530, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Could the secretary please read the resolution 2015-31 in support of Hayden? Absolutely. A resolution of the Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians to show support for Tribal Member Hayden Griffith et al. 
Whereas the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians adopts this resolution to publicly announce our belief that all tribal members have the right, per federal law, to possess eagle feathers and use them as part of the Religious Freedom Act. Now therefore it be it resolved, the Delaware Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians does hereby make public the support of Hayden Lane Griffith, Delaware Tribal Member number 56172, to honor her tribe, culture, heritage, and traditions by wearing her eagle feather atop her mortarboard at her high school graduation. And I'll so move that motion. I'm seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Do I hear discussion? Uh, I'd like to discuss it. <clears throat> this is um, something that's in court right now, and I don't know. I don't know that it's a, is this something that uh, we want to to bring while it's 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 in court, and it's it's so far after the fact. I mean, if if there was going to be some support for her, it should have been done a month ago. I wrote my letter a long time ago. Well, it's, a, it's such a personal, private thing. Why, why are we even getting involved in it as a tribal council? It's one of our tribal members, and she's one of our youth. Well, it's, it is a, it's, it's a president said, I mean, the, the law is taking care of it, not the tribe's not taking care of it. And um, when I was subpoenaed to go down there today, and they asked me questions about, they asked me about uh, uh, about our religion, and I, I said that our religion, the elders put it away in 1924. So I didn't know what religion that she was talking about because I wasn't in the room when she testified, so I, I didn't have that privilege. And also, we, as Delaware women, we did not wear uh, eagle feathers in our hair. That just wasn't what we did. This is this is Pan Indian pop culture. It is not our traditions of our Delaware tribe. A Delaware woman does not wear eagle feathers. Is that what you told them? I t what I told them when they asked me if I had eagle feathers, I said yes, I do. And they said, well, uh, what do you do with them? I said I have a fan. And when I'm doing intertribal dancing. In the in the arena, I carry my fan to fan myself, and but when I'm doing dances that are cultural dances, we don't use eagle feathers. Is what I told them. When I'm wearing my Delaware outfit, I don't wear eagle feathers. As exactly. Well. However, when I'm wearing my fancy shawl, I wear my feathers. Well, when I and wear when my I was, buckskin, I wear my eagle feather. And so there you go. There are certain times that we can and are allowed to. And when I graduated from Stanford, from OSU. And from OU, I wore one. And that was a, that was wonderful that they allowed the privilege. However, it's not the a privilege. Valley, no, it's a legal precedent. Well, wait a minute. The Caney Valley School has rules that have never been. Uh, have, they've, they've reached. The, they say when we look out over our graduates, we want to see all their mortar boards the same. That we don't make. That we don't. Uh, Make anything special for any one student. So therefore, that was their that was their rule. It's never been changed, and possibly it could be changed. But what religion was she talking about? That's what I wonder. Well, it's part of the Religious Freedom Act. It's not necessarily particular to any tribe. It's just part of Native culture and Native traditions, and so that it falls under the Religious Freedom. Well, when there's 560 some tribes, how do we decide? Which, I mean, unless the school be, decides to make this a change, and, and, and the superintendent sat on the stand and he said that Chief Baker went down and talked to him and said that Chief Baker said that when he left, he said, well, I certainly understand your situation. You've got to have something consistent for all people, to, uh, for every student to follow. And uh, he understood that he might open some kind of a Pandora's box if he didn't. But someday they may change that. But I don't see that. I think that we should not teach our children rebellion and disrespect for the rules. And if she could, if they did, wait a minute, they told her she could wear that feather if she wanted to wear it on her neck or carry it. But they didn't want it on top of the mortar board, and the family turned it down. Now that is 
They had, she could have worn it. It wasn't that they wouldn't let her take it. They were trying to bend over backwards for her and the family refused. It's what he testified to in federal court. That's what who testified to? That's what the, uh, that is what the uh, principal, uh, the superintendent of the school testified to. Well, did, did the school subpoena you? Man? No, the, the attorney for the school subpoenaed me. Subpoenaed D and I both. They didn't ever call D to the stand, and they only asked me three questions. But I can tell you that uh, when I listened to that, uh, what happened, the school tried to, to work with her. They tried very hard, and there's some thought that maybe they're trying to join a whole something in the state of Oklahoma to get all schools to uh, change their, and, and I don't think the schools mind changing. I think that it's just a tradition in Ramona that when they sit out there and look at the, and he said hundreds and hundreds, so he said hundreds and hundreds of people come to that school to watch the graduation. They're very proud of that in the Caney Valley. They want to see all the mortarboards alike. And they told her she could put, have pictures taken in it. He would even take a picture with her after the ceremony was over. But for, for unity, they wanted everyone's mortarboards to be the same. And whether that's right or wrong, I'm not even the judge of that because it, when my, when my granddaughters graduated from high school, one in Texas, one in California, I beaded their tassel and their schools permitted them to wear it. They had no rules against it. But to come up a, a month before graduation and expect the school to cave in and change for a demand that they were trying to accommodate her and she wouldn't, and, and the, the family wouldn't, her mother wouldn't uh, permit it. Now well, that's what, that was the testimony in the court today. I heard it with my own ears. I'd call for the question. A question has been called, do I? Did you have something don't, you want to say? You don't to have you? to have it. Yeah, I do have something I want to say. Okay. Uh, your description of what Chief Baker said is not what he told me immediately after he had talked with the superintendent of the Caney Valley School. Uh, not only Chief Baker, but also the Cherokee Nation Attorney General uh, wrote the school, as did Native American Rights Foundation and the American Civil Liberties Union, and I wrote the school, and I am proud that I asked the school to let her wear her eagle feather on her motorboard. The question's been called. All in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, the vote was uh, five yes, one no. Can I, can I ask one question? Um, what is the difference between wearing it on the mortarboard and wearing it in her hair? Because the resolution is for her to be able, and the fight is to be able for her to wear it on the mortarboard, right? Yes. What is the difference between that and wearing it in her hair or carrying it? Which the school has allowed her to do that, right? They've said that they would, they would allow that? I haven't heard well. that. Well, he testified under oath. <laughs> that's what he told. That's and they did not deny that's it. That's the first I've heard of that option. Also, he, he also uh, told me that they had a written prohibition, and uh, I will say that uh, the, the, any prohibition about something being worn on the motorboard was <laughs> described as no decorations and in addition to that you, 
years earlier, in uh, 2001, I think, one of our Delaware tribal male members wore an eagle feather on his motherboard. At Caney Valley? At Caney Valley. And their description of no decorations was not published until Hayden had asked the school. Uh, uh, now, my personal thought was that she erred by asking the school, but it's also my personal thought that the school board in Palm A erred when they insisted that a Pawnee male student cut his braids in uh, 1977. And these kind of problems keep coming around. And I think we owe it to any of our tribal members to support their cause. Can I add just a few more things to that? First of all, uh, she didn't ask, and I know that's kind of misinformation. Uh, what happened was she posted it on Facebook and the uh, school, some authorities from the school saw it. And then they approached her at school and told her she couldn't wear it. So first she didn't ask, uh, She people had saw it and, and then tried to tell her that she couldn't wear it. The second thing I want to note for the record is that when she was little, when Hayden was little, they walked her out into the arena and this is where it, it gets a little slippery because this is where Annette's talking about where's the difference between Delaware culture and some of our cross-cultural traditions. And when she was plumed, basically, she had Lakotas walking her around the drum. And they were the ones that plumed her. And so in that sense, I mean, it is hers. It is her religion. And it's the same thing that happened with my kids. Delaware tradition isn't necessarily that you walk around the arena to, to do the powwow, although you can follow that. But then when, when uh, my boys were all in the arena, they, they all had to have a special, um, you know, so that they could put the, the roach on their head and put those feathers on their head. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, some people say that, you know, the Shawnees and Delawares walked all this way so that they don't, they walked and, and they're paid, the, the way has been paid for them through our ancestors. So there are definitely many different traditions. But the fact that, you know, some Lakota put those on her head, to me, is where the religious significance comes into it. And I'm adopted by three or four other tribes myself, and I would follow those traditions mm -hmm. and, and recognize those religions. Well, the, uh, the, the problem gets down to the fact that uh, I, I would not encourage my youth to be, to, to uh, defy a rule like that and have me in rebellion. That's just not a good thing to teach kids to be rebellious. I just, and, and, and I don't see it as rebellious. I view it as standing up for her rights. Well, yeah, that's, that. that might, but when do her rights start mixing with the school's rights and the other kids there? I don't think they discriminated against her. I didn't see, why don't they let, if they're going to let one child wear something on the motor board, why don't they let them all do it? I was told by the, my, our nephew, Bear, that up at, up at uh, Haskell now, that they just, some kids wear caps and gowns, some people, some kids don't wear them. Some kids wear stuff all over. They want to wear and carry. They can do anything they want to. There is nothing uh, ceremonial about their, their graduation. They're just out there. I think that eventually what we might end up doing, kids won't even have graduations because that's what the superintendent was saying. It's a very solemn, secular type ceremony. And I don't understand why, uh, I, I just, I, you know, my ancestors, I don't know I'm older than the rest of you, but they were very private about things like that. And today I know we live in a different age and every, anything goes, we can do anything we want to, but um, Delaware people were reserved about things like that and, and they, just, they just didn't flaunt it. 
and they were of course my ancestors weren't religious either and they they, they, they would have I don't know if my mother probably would have rebelled against going to a graduation. It was too quiet for her. Same with marriage and a whole bunch of other institutions. We've already voted on that one. Well, we have one that hasn't voted. Oh, is that you, Benita? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. And I, I vote that we support this resolution. Resolution passes. One, two, three. Uh, yes, one, no. Well, and I hope we don't put the death, uh, the death on our own culture is what I hope. I mean, honestly, this is pan-Indian culture. You've got to admit it. Uh, Nikki just said it's five religions or however many religions that she follows. It's well, just, uh, I, don't, I don't consider it uh, pan religion myself. Pan Indian. It's what it's already. It's all intertribal powwows. People, powwows have changed so much. There's nothing personal about them. They're a, they're an entertainment event for that Indians participate in. Well, in in that regard, uh, Delaware. No, let me rephrase that. A Lenape what woman named. Mary Townsend roached me with an eagle feather four or five years before there ever was a Delaware powwow. Eagle feathers are frequently used and Native American church practices. My great-grandfather was a Baptist preacher that preached at the Silver Lake Baptist Church in Lenape, and half of the people that go to the Native American church are also Christian and had I know that. I know that. But you know what? Uh, I know that exactly. I, I, you're not telling anything I don't know, uh, Chet. And the thing about it is that our Delawares, when our big house church ended, they went into that. Uh, some of them did. Some of them went into the Christian church. Some of them went into the Paoli church. And in, in that respect, you know what? When they tried to fight the Paoli church, I stood. I stood for that because. If they come after the peyote church, they're going to come after the Christian church next. And that's what will happen eventually, that, that, that the government will come after. They come at their, they will. It's just, it's what happens when a country starts going down. And I would like to see our Indian people stand up and be champions of culture, not go along with the, with the crowd. And Amen. that's why I think that I standing think up for our Delaware culture is very important. And, and this, this is settled as far as you all are concerned. And uh, we'll see what happens in the past. And I'll probably be dead, but you'll be alive. Uh, not you, but you too. <laughs> you'll be alive. Charles, I think you had your hand up. Just got to for a second. Thank you. Chet and I'll be dead. Maybe Nate. I've been accused this evening of being uh, opinionated of which I plead completely guilty. Uh, but as a judge, if I, my opinion gets in the way of being fair 